Good morning. Um, I hope I'm live already. I hope you can see me. Uh, I'm just going to have a look and see if I'm going to pop up on my laptop now. How are you this morning? It's glorious out there, isn't it? It's lovely and sunny, but it's still a bit nippy. Um, and I've actually come to the studio today with my slippers on. So I've actually got my Ugg boots on today because I had really cold feet yesterday, despite the fact that it was nice and sunny outside. Um, I thought I would just make sure that I was comfortable today. Um, how are you? I'm gonna see if I can find us on here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to see me at the moment. You should be able to in a moment. You're coming up on oh, my screen. Am I? Yes. Oh, that's okay. Just so if that I go on to everyone else can see. Jules is trying I'm to trying. get her computer so she can answer comments. Yes. And then I'm streaming down through my computer there. Aha, there we go. So, uh, yes, we've got two computers on the go and a camera and a microphone. That's it. Right, now I'm going to mute myself. And Otherwise. One. You'll have me talking in the background. Oops, there we go. Right, there we go. Oh, hello. I can see who's here now. Hello, Margaret. Hello, Barbara. Hello, Donna. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Sue. Um, let's see who else is here. Tina, hi. Christine, hello. Leanne, how are you this morning? Brilliant. That's good. I can see I'm not. Morning, Amy. Hi, Suzanne. Oh, it's rain at the Wirral. Oh, you're ra it's raining in the Wirral. Hopefully... Uh, it will clear up for you today. There we go. Typical British, aren't we? Talking about the weather. Right. What I thought we would do today on Technics Tuesday is talk about PDFs. Now, because we've launched the uh, Sewing Studio now, our online subscription, head on over and have a look if you want to. Um, all of the patterns in there are going to be PDFs. Now, most of our patterns we do as PDFs anyway. Now, some of you people have said, what is a PDF? It's one of those downloadable things, isn't it? Actually, it stands for a portable document format, which means that um, rather than unlike a Word document or anything like that, sometimes when you open Word documents in different browsers or on different kinds of computers, it changes the format and the way it looks. With a PDF, you know you're going to get what it's supposed to be. So you can't edit it. It's just a read-only kind of document. Um, so it's one of those things that makes it a lot easier for people to print off at home or wherever. Um, hi, Alison. Hello, Linda. How are you? Hi, Sue. Yes. Oh, oh it's sunny and worthing, is it? Lovely. That's good. Hi, Bernadette. Uh, Amy, you're watching while homeschooling. <laughs> Are you skiving? <laughs> so, right, PDFs. Now, we've had quite a few people ask about these. So what I'm going to do is talk you through everything start to finish. And I'm going to try and turn my screen around so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Because we have a lot of people kind of think, I can't open it. How do I? I've downloaded it, but it won't open. So what you're going to need, if you think about it, um, a PDF is like another document. And what you need is some kind of way of translating that document and taking it from all of the kind of like little bits of computer information stuff and actually turning it into something that you can read. So we need something that's uh, a kind of a translator, if you like. So Word is a kind of translator for um, typed documents and things like that um, and uh, it doesn't always work on so if you've got um, a Mac or something obviously I can't I don't use Word on my Mac because it's for PCs so that way what you want is something that's universal so we need to make sure that um, when you open your PDF you're going to be able to read it so you're going to need something now my Mac kind of does it anyway and we're used to doing it. But if you're not used to opening and reading PDFs, you may well find that you're going to need a little bit of software called um, Adobe Acrobat Reader. It's very easy. Um, I'm going to stick the link up in the comments. You just want to download that little bit of software. And what it will do is that acts as kind of like a translator so that when you open your PDF document, you'll be able to read it exactly as we intended. 
It's very, very easy. It doesn't take up loads of space. All you do is just literally click on the link and it will download. Say, say it'll ask you, do you want to download this? And you say yes, and it does it for you. And then it just kind of sits away and chunters away in the background on your computer or your laptop or wherever. And um, you should be able to then open up your PDFs and read them and then print them off. So, lovely. Oh, we've got more people talking about the weather. I know, it's lovely, isn't it? It changes everywhere. Um, hello, Phyllis, how are you? Uh, so, in order to go through a PDF, now, when you open a PDF, we want to make sure that you're going to open it with something that's going to be able to read it. So, what I'm going to do is turn you round so you can kind of see my screen. Now, I'm going to do this with our Arden bag because it's relatively small and um, it'll fit on the table and I can show you what to do with it. So when you purchase any of our patterns, you'll be sent to a page like this. So once you've gone through the whole checkout process, we then will send you an email that says, click on the link to download your pattern kind of thing. And this is where it will send you. So it'll be a page like this. Um, and then it just says download now. So if you click on that, what will happen? Now on my window there, I've got my little downloads tucked up in the corner. Now, if you're working with um, a PC, then you, it will go into your, um, now, where is it on a PC? I'm so unused to using a PC. Well, you don't know either, do remember you? remember anymore. <laughs> I know, it'll, it'll go into your downloads folder on your computer. So to, for me to find it, I need to go into something called Finder and then it will go into download. So somewhere on a PC, you'll have something similar to this where you'll be able to find all your bits and pieces. So I've just clicked on to download and there I can see I've got my send me something Arden bag folder there. Now, what I'm going to do is to move that out of that downloads folder into uh, somewhere on my computer so it's easier to read because if I just clicked on that now and opened it then it's going to open up in my browser and there are not as many uh, printer settings when you come to want to print your pattern so it's much easier to open it with a specific bit of software so in this case it would be like Adobe Acrobat Reader or in my case, it'll be preview because I know that that's how my PDFs open and I can read them. So you know, I need to put my glasses on now because I can't actually see what I'm doing. So in terms of, let me close that. So what I've done, let me open up my new finder. There we go. And then I want to open up. Now I've just created a specific folder for test PDFs, there we go. So I've created space on my computer to download the file. So what I'm going to do, now you can copy and paste. Now with a, a Mac, it's really easy. You just literally drop and drag. And now that file has come out of my downloads and it's into my specific folder for um, test PDF patterns. So you might wanna put it in documents or you might want to create a specific folder somewhere that you know it's going to be and uh, you can open it again. Okay, so I'm just going to flip over to Facebook and see. I have the option to download or open. So I open an Adobe and save the file later. Brenda, that's absolutely perfect. Yeah, because you've got Adobe Acrobat Reader already. So that's absolutely brilliant. Uh, hi, Laurie, how are you? Uh, Chunters, fabulous. I know, Nikki, it's a good word, isn't it? Chunters, yeah. Um, brilliant. That's just checking comments, just to see if anybody's got any questions. Hi, Mia, how are you? Lovely. Right, OK, let's go back on to my thingy. There we go. So we've got in the folder here, let's move that up out of the way. So this is a folder, and inside the folder are the different documents. Uh, Oh, sorry. Turn around a wee bit more. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. So you've got the three different things here. So we've got basically what's included in your pattern. 
uh, which we've done with most of them, I think. Then we've got the uh, instructions. So they will come as a separate PDF that you can print off or you can just have it up on your tablet or your screen and have it next to you whilst you're sewing. So then I've got uh, my Ardent. This is the actual bag pattern itself. So this is the one that's tiled up with um, onto A4 sheets of paper. Now, in other patterns, so some of the other formats, we've got... Um, do you want to come back up to me because I'm talking? Ooh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, I feel like I'm talking to nobody then. If I could talk into the camera, then I think I'm talking to someone. Um, so a lot of our clothes patterns will have different formats. So they'll have um, an A4 format, which means that you can print it out on lots of little sheets that we can stick together. It'll have an A0 format um, that you can send to a copy shop and that will print out on bigger sheets. You still will have to do some piecing together because the A0 sheets of paper aren't big enough to hold a whole pattern piece sometimes. So you will have to join bits together. Um, or what we do is have a large format, which is 36 inches wide, which is bigger than an A0. That's how we print all of the patterns out that we do for um, the paper versions of them. Um, and there are some copy shops, not so many in this in the UK, um, but there are more in America that will be able to print off at that 36 inch wide large format. So you can choose whichever format you want to use. So most people will go for um, an A4 because it means you can just print it out at home. Um, we are going to be offering you a PDF print service just for our patterns. So um, I'm going to talk about more, more about that later. But basically it means that if you want to order the download, we're going to give you an option then to have us print it for you on one massive sheet and then we can just whack it in an envelope and send it out to you. It means that you won't get the card wallet or the printed instruction booklet or the postcard or anything like that, but you'll have a whole printed pattern. Um, and what we can do then is just send that out to you. And then you've got the download version as well. And you've got the um, PDF instructions that you can either print out or you can have on a screen or a tablet next to you when you're so. But I'm going to tell you more about that later. So if I'm going to click on my A4 tiled version of the pattern. Now I'm going to right click and it says open with. Now I'm just going to open with preview. Oh, I can't get my, there we go. Open with preview because I know that's going to work. But you could then open with Adobe Acrobat Reader if you wanted to, if that's going to make it much easier. So I've got my pattern here. And if I scale that down, there we go. You can see it's got all the different ones on there. Now I've just realized that I've printed one off and it doesn't have a test square. <gasps> so maybe this isn't the best one to do, but I'm gonna carry on anyway. So in order to make sure that I'm printing this out, now this I'm showing you what you're seeing now is the actual printed bit. So it hasn't got the border on it because we haven't told it what size it needs to be on the actual paper. So this is the actual print. This is the, the bit that's going to print out. So if I click on to file and print now, it automatically comes up with a tiny little margin because what it's done, and this is the important bit here, here is the scale. So if you look, it's automatically scaled it to fit the page. But if we click on scale, that's telling us that it's done it at 114%. So automatically, that pattern now is 14% bigger than the actual size we need it to be because we want it to be 100%, which is the correct size. So rather than this bit here is the really important bit. So rather than scale to fit, we want to scale it, but we need it to be at 100%. And that's going to give us the border around the edge so that we can overlap everything and stick it all together. And it also means now, 
<laughs> I've chosen the bad example here because it hasn't got a test square on it. Um, and I clicked this one out of, um, so we need to make sure that that has got a test square on it. So actually, Charlie, make a note. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> so what we're going to do is print this out and I will show you how it's all going to stick together. So I'm going to now again, what you would normally do. So normally in here, you'll have a little test square and I will find another pattern and I'll show you what I mean, actually. So we would print that out. And now I would always print the page that has the test square on it. In fact, let me just find one quickly so that I can show you what I mean. So I'm going to go in and grab one of my patterns and show you quickly. There we go. Let's do uh, preferably one of the smaller ones. I know. So yes, yeah, so I'm not out. ten million pages. Yeah, I'm just going to have a look at peas. Actually, I think that's well, no, Regan. Let's do Regan because that's a small one. In fact, I should have done that one straight away, shouldn't I, really? That would have been the sensible thing to do. Well, the, these are the trials so, and tribulations of live. Exactly, of being alive. Gordon's alive. Right, here we go. Quite a few people are saying that the PDF printing service is a great idea. I know, yes. We've been kind of umming and ahhing about that. And I'm just kind of, again, it's on the list of things. I wish I could clone myself, actually. It would make life so much easier. I'm not sure I could quite handle having two wives, though. <laughs> no, my God, go with the one you've got, can you really? <laughs> oh, dear. Right, OK, so here we go. We're going to do this one instead. Now, we've got, if I turn that round, so we're printing out the Regan now. Um, as you can see on here, it's Just got... Zooming in. Brilliant. It says, on the first page, this is a 10 centimetre by 10 centimetre test square. So what I'm going to do, so we've got, we need to make sure that the scale is checked and we need to make sure that the scale is set at 100%, okay? You want to double check it and make sure that you've got that margin around the edge. Now, it says automatically to print all the pages. So we've got 25 pages of here. I'm not gonna print all of them. Um, but what we want to do is because we've got that test square on there, I'm gonna go from one to one. OK, so I want just to print that first page because I want to check and make sure that everything's right. So if I click on that one, there we go. It's going to chunter away and print that out. So I'm going to hop over um, and see if there's any questions. The option to open, save or save. Yeah. Um, Mel, I would definitely save it into um, a folder on your laptop. That will make it much easier to um, find. I save to iBooks on your iPad and then email it to your husband's computer for printing. <laughs> I like that. That's a good idea, Linda. <laughs> oh, dear. There we go. PDF. OK, so it looks like everyone's quite happy with a PDF service. So I'm going to get that sorted. Here we go. It's my lovely assistant. Thank you so much. Right, so that's the first page and we've got the uh, test square printed on there. So, no test, what, no test square? I know exactly, Sue. Who thought that I didn't actually prepare this earlier? No. The croft bag has one. Yes, thank you, Sue. I'm going to go back and actually change that Arden bag, so that's on my list of things to do today. So, let's go back to my little thingy. Where's it gone? There we go. Right, so we've printed off the first page. So this is where we can actually test it and make sure, there we go, that we've got there. So we know that that square is 10 centimetres. If it's not 10 centimetres, there's something amiss. And we need to double check your settings on your printing scale. And that will probably be nine times out of 10. That's the problem. It just hasn't printed out at the correct scale. OK, so once you know that that's OK. Would you like me to come back to you? Yes, please. <laughs> Three, two, one, back in the room. There we go. So once you know you've got the sizing right, you can print out the rest of it. Now, I'm going to print out, say, the first 10 pages uh, from two because we've already got one. 
to 10. No, not 210, 10. There we go. Cool. So while that's chuntering, I'm going to show you how to stick them all together. Now, the nice thing is you can kind of enjoy this process. I know people get really kind of frustrated by, oh God, it's going to take ages, but actually it's quite nice to do a little bit of cutting and sticking. It's a bit like those um, adult colouring books. Do you know what I mean? You just sit there and you just kind of get lost in the moment and do a little bit of colouring and have a cup of tea and chill out and stuff like that. Now you could just cut the margins off with um, a pair of scissors if you want to. That's absolutely fine. If you want to be a little bit more organised, shall I say, then you can use a ruler and um, like a craft knife or something like that. You who glue is escaping. No, Pritt sticks escaping. So what I'm going to do now is we want to start. So this basically is the one that's in the top left corner. And then they kind of go across. And when you get to the end, now they've got, we've got these big triangles that hopefully you can't miss. So what we're doing, going to do is to match those up. So what we want to do is to trim off the left, the right hand side and the bottom. Now it doesn't really matter whether it's right or left to be honest, but I would keep your first page intact and then I'm going to show you how to trim the other ones off. So Charlie, if you wouldn't mind just grabbing the other printed pages for me, that would be lovely. Thank you so much. There we go. Right. So we've got, let me move that over there. So we've got our first page and then we've got our second page. So we've got a nice little stack. I haven't got them all, but I'm going to put them like that. So we've got, we've got one A, one B. So this is the first line. So we've got one, tested page one to make sure that your test square is the right size because we need to make sure that we're scaling the printed version of this. So it needs to be scale at 100% and then we can kind of start laying it out. So what I've done with this one is we've got, oh actually that's Arden bag isn't it? I haven't printed out the, uh, yeah, let me go and print out the other one. See, I should have done this. It's a technical hitch day today. That's what it is. <laughs> we obviously need far more copy. I think we do. Yeah. We no, I don't want that. To ask, ask Let's get rid of that. To drop off more monsoon estates coffee. <laughs> right. Here we go. Yes. Uh, here is part two, uh, Leanne says. Yeah, part two of the how to print and assemble your the, PDF. The return of the... Now, we're st stopping a few technical hitches, but I, I shall try to sort them out. There we go. We are right. online. Uh, we've, we've nearly got everyone. Gin, Amy. Yes, please. <laughs> anyone, that would be nice, wouldn't if, it? If anyone can drop off some gin, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, <laughs> it is never too early for oh. gin in lockdown. That is a true fact. Right, let's have a quick look. Let's get rid of that one. We want the Regan top that we're going to print. And we need to do that scale okay. to fit. Uh, there we part go. Part one, if Leanne can have a look if part one is, is on Facebook Live. Um, Marvellous, right. I mean, you don't know because I'm screaming. Okay, it is, I've got it, it's up there, so that's okay. okay. So what we want to do then, as, as a few pages come out, if you can, so, hello. This is not usually what happens, but here we go. We're doing a live and hey ho. Uh, let's see if I can answer any questions. Uh, Debs, part one is gonna be on the feed. So if you've just joined us, 
we had a bit of a technical hitch. I think that was a cable came out actually. So we lost everybody for a bit. So part one is up there still on our timeline. So you should be able to click on that video and watch what we've got up to so far. And then I'm gonna show you how to um, assemble all of your PDF pieces. So, <laughs> yeah. So it, it, it would probably be quite good to, to do a really quick recap. In I moment. am going to do exactly that thing. Um, and there we, we go. will put all of this properly joined up yes. onto YouTube later. Yes, what Charlie said. Hopefully they can hear me through your microphone. Probably. Because I'm quite loud. You are very loud. I apologize. You should hear him when he's on a Zoom call. Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. Right, okay, we're going to recap slightly for everybody who has just joined us. So, um, when you are downloading a PDF, first of all, you want to make sure that you're putting it out of your downloads and put it into another folder somewhere on your computer where you're going to be able to find it. And then you want to make sure that when you're opening it, right click and do open with, and then you want something like preview if it's on a Mac, or Adobe Acrobat Reader if it's in uh, on a PC. And that way it's not changing the format for you. So you'll keep everything, oh, thank you, darling. Keep everything nice and sorted. So this is what you're going to get. Now, when you are ready to print your pattern, what we want to do is to make sure that it's gonna print at the right size. So if I go back into, there we go. If I open with that, so. I've got my, this is the Regan pattern, if I shrink that down, there we go. So I've opened up my PDF and I've shrunk it down so you can see we've got all the pages here, all the different bits of the pattern. And what I'm going to do is just print out that first page. So because we've got that test square on it, I'm going to go to file and print. Now, the important thing is that we need to make sure we're going to get it to the right scale. So we don't want it scale to fit because that's going to make it too big. So we're going to click on scale and then make sure that it's at 100%. OK, so we want scale 100%. And what I think we'll do is actually create a checklist for you to go through, actually, so that you can double download that and you'll know it's going to be right. So now I've just got my... You can see it's right because you've got that border around the edge of your paper page, the edge of the paper. I'm going to just print off that one page just to double check and make sure that we've got it at the right size. So if I print off the first page, I can then double check and make sure that that test square is what it says it is. And that's absolutely key to making sure that you get the right size, because if it's bigger, which it probably will be, you're going to end up with an incorrect sized garment. So I'm just gonna measure that. So there we go, you can see that that 10 centimeter square is 10 centimeters. Now, depending on what kind of pattern your, it could be anybody else's pattern, it might be a two inch square or a four inch square or a five centimeter square, whatever it is. But just double check and make sure that the measure, the, it physically measures what it's supposed to. And then you'll know you're bang on. Then what you can do is go back and print the rest of your pattern. So you can start to piece it all together. Now we, on ours, we've got um, little triangles with uh, numbers and letters so that you can match everything together. So we've got, there we go, one B, one C, and one D. So we go five across on this pattern. And the reason I know that is because there aren't any little triangles on that right hand edge, Just which means we've kind of come in, yeah. to the end of that line. Mm -hmm. Cool. So then it means we're going to start on the next row. So we've got the 2A that's matching up and then we've got the 3A, which is going to take us all the way across. Now, you can go, actually, let's get rid of those ones. So what will happen is you'll have all the different bits and pieces that you need, all the different pages that you've got. So they will all kind of match up. And you can kind of, without the borders, you can kind of start to see how things are kind of fitting together. 
Now, if you want to, you could just trim everything off with a pair of scissors and that keeps it nice and easy. Or you can use a ruler and a craft knife. Or if you've got a guillotine at home, you could use one of those. Now, I quite like starting with the first sheet as a whole one. And then that gives me something to anchor everything else onto. So I'm going to just trim off the left-hand side of that pattern. Oh, a bit crap there. <laughs> Everything's going wrong today, isn't it? <laughs> I can't even <laughs> cut in a straight line this morning. It's a good job. We're going to be able to do a proper one of these and put it up in the sewing studio. So that one now will line up bang on there with that one. Now, again, I like glue, but that's just me. If you prefer to tape, then feel free. So, but I like glue because it keeps it a little bit sturdier and just makes it easier to keep everything in the right place. There we go. There. Oops, that's not quite. There we go. So you can start to see how that bit is joining up. So I'm going to do the same on this one and then I'll show you how to do the other bits because when you have a whole piece, it's much easier to see what I'm going to show you next. So let's just make sure. There we go. And I'm going to stick that down. Again, this is actually, I have to say, I quite enjoy doing this. But maybe that's because I'm actually a child at heart and I quite like a bit of cutting and sticking. I wasn't going to say anything. Thank you for that, Charlie Bud. <laughs> there. So again, you can start to see how everything's kind of taking a bit more shape. Um, now, when you've kind of stuck all the way across, you want to start with the next row. So this time I'm just going to trim off the top edge of this one. There we go. So this would be sheet number six because we've got five going across the top and I can take my glue across there and I can line that up. There we go. So I've got my triangles matching that side and I've got my triangles matching that side. And I can keep going. There we go. So this time I'm going to take off the top and the left hand edge. You could do the right hand edge if you wanted to. It's entirely up to you. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to take that one off as well. There. So now this one will just sit on there like that. So I can put my glue across both edges and get that into place. Now, with the best will in the world, it is going to go slightly squiffy. We try really hard and it matches up digitally perfectly. But the problem is when we start to cut and put all of these bits together, that um, things are going to move because we're not computers. And uh, when we cut and try and stick things back together again, it is going to be, you know, the odd millimetre or so out. So I wouldn't sweat it too much at all because I'm going to show you a way around that. Now, another way of doing it is to actually stick down as many pieces as you need to get a whole pattern piece together. So if I stick that onto there, there we go. 
Now, I don't think I've printed out enough to... There we go, I can do this bit. So, if I put this bit on the end here, if I just trim this edge off, I can show you what I mean. Because what we want to try and do is to keep, basically, the idea of a PDF is to have your pattern pieces rather than a pristine whole sheet. That's a fair assumption, really, it, because what you want to do is actually use your pattern pieces to make something else. So this is a means to an end, really, rather than the end in itself. So I can't cut with a stick of glue. <laughs> I, was, I was trying not to say anything. <laughs> oh, dear, honestly. You definitely need more I coffee. I really seriously need more coffee today. There we go. So I can stick this one back down now. So I've got a whole piece there. Now what I could do is carry on cutting and sticking the whole of the rest of the pattern. Or I can just do as I go and kind of cut the bits. So I know that I've got that bit sorted. So that neck band there, I can cut that out or I can trace that off as a whole piece. Then. I could start thinking about getting the sleeve together. So if I cut off this top bit here, so if I trim off that edge and then do the top. So you don't have to have what I'm trying to say is you don't have to have the whole thing all stuck together first. You can try and do it so that you're sticking the bits down that make the difference. So you want all of your pieces to be able to join together to create the shapes that you need. So if rather than trying to get the whole sheet together, you're just working on getting the pieces that you need. If that I'm makes just sense. I'm going to do a quick thing. Oh, you're going to sharpen. Oh, thank there, you. Is, uh, it was much sharper. Blade. Thank you. There. So I'm starting to create a shape. So what I could do is put those two pieces on and whatever bits I need to finish off the sleeve and then just cut that out. And we've got that as a separate piece. So you don't necessarily have to have the whole sheet flat and beautiful. You can just stick together the bits that you need to, in order to create the shape. Does that make sense? I hope so. Now, once you've got your pattern pieces together, a lot of people will um, keep this as a master copy. And that way you've got the original there and you can just trace off whatever size you want to use. So you might want to, um, again, it's really handy if you want to use it for making garments for different people. So you might want to make a size 10 for your daughter and a size 14 for yourself or something like that. Um, and that way you've got this master copy that you can then trace off. Equally, you could cut it out and just use it as a pattern because you know, you've got the PDF and you can print it out as many times as you like. It's just a question of sticking it together and then using it for whatever size you want to cut out, really. I hope that makes it a bit easier. I'm going to have a quick look and see if we've got any questions. I was just about to... Because I'm sure there are. Yes, okay. there are some questions. So okay, let's see if I can find my window. Interesting clip of Jules on a computer. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Bernie's still not convinced cutting and sticking is fun <laughs> being on the printing service. Oh, I don't know, Bernie. I don't know. It's quite therapeutic, especially when you get something good on Radio 4 or something like that. So that's OK. What happens when the dog jumps <laughs> on the table asking for a friend? I love that, Sue. That's brilliant. <laughs> oh, dear. Use really cheap copy paper. Yeah, that's Christine. That's a really good idea. You don't want to use anything quality for this, really, because you're going to chop it up and, and what have you. So that's absolutely fine. Um, Sue, so, yes, do piece by piece. That really does, it does make it easier because otherwise you're going to end up with a massive sheet, you know, that's bigger than your table, that's bigger than your bed because a lot of our patterns have got, you know, 40 plus sheets of paper of A4. So it does make it easier if you just piece together the bits that you want. Now you could actually 
lay it out and make sure that you've got all the pieces for the neckband and then just cut that out and then stick all those bits together. You could make sure that you've got all the pieces together for the sleeve and then cut that out and then just stick all of those bits together. So you're cutting everything first rather than having to try and get all of those A4 sheets together. That's another way of doing it as well. And that works quite well. I have to admit, that's probably the way I would do it actually. So that's good. Um, can you pick out your size on Adobe Layers? Um, yes, you can. We haven't ticked that actually. I probably do need to go back out. The reason we haven't done it so that you can just print off one size is that we actually find most people aren't one size. They're kind of a combination of different things. But that is something that we can definitely look at. And um, there is the ability to be able to turn on and off layers. So what we do when we create the patterns is we put each size on a different layer and they're all kind of stacked together, but you can turn them off so that you can just see the sizes that you want. Um, and that actually is another thing. Make a note, Charlie. That's another thing we need to do. So we'll have a look at that yeah, and yeah. see if we can get that turned on for you. Um, yeah, Linda, that's what I'm kind of, yeah. Uh, that's what we've just kind of covered. Uh, does doing it in the pieces make it more manageable? Yes, Brenda, it does. So what you can do is where you've got like loads and loads of bits and we've got the whole pattern, you can actually just cut around the bits that you need and stick those together. So you might just want to cut it, you lay it all out so they kind of look like they're together and then just cut between the two bits. So on this piece here, for example, I've got um, two pieces. So I've got the cuff on one bit and I've got part of the sleeve on the other. So I could cut through that, that piece of paper and then I've got that piece that will join onto the cuff and I've got that piece of sleeve that will join onto the rest of the sleeve. So rather than having, you're just worried about individual pattern pieces rather than trying to get the whole thing to sit and work. I hope that makes sense. Um, anything else I need to answer? Uh, you can fold instead. Um, Patricia, folding it does make it a bit thicker so it's less accurate. I would trim off the margins if you can, because it will make it much easier to get everything matched up as well. So that's a good one. Christine, better than a jigsaw? Yeah, so it is actually. There we go. Uh, I think we're there. Donna, you love cutting and sticking. Yeah, I love cutting and sticking. I like colouring in as well. I'm a bit sad like that. Right, I think we're there, aren't we? That's cool. 40 plus, I know that's my case. I know, Bernie, I know, but think of the joy you'll have with that much cutting and sticking. It's wonderful, it really is. Um, the other thing I would say is have another envelope or something so that you can store all of this. Um, some people roll them up, but I kind of think they do get a little bit distorted that way. If it's folded, it's got nice crisp lines that you're going to fold it on um, and it's going to keep it nice and sorted. I wouldn't try and fold it on where the lines where you've kind of cut them. I would try and fold it so that it's a little bit bigger. I'd fold it in the middle. So rather than trying to fold it on a line where you've cut it and stuck it, I would fold it in the middle actually because you're going to get it as a much nicer, crisper kind of fold there. And it's not going to compromise where you've stuck your pieces together. So those are going to keep nice and flat because we don't want to fold those because it's going to kind of make it come unstuck. Um, both my sizes on layers and then merge them by hand. Christine, that's perfect. Yep, that's a brilliant way of doing it. So you're just literally printing off the sizes that you want. So you could be, I don't know, you could be, um, a, a 12 bust, a 14 waist, a 16 hips. So you just print off the 12, 14, 16, and then you can blend those sizes together to get the shape that you need. So there we go. Um, no wonder they gave us a little <laughs> coffee. Yes, sorry, reading as well. Yes, Nikki, coffee helps with cutting and sticking PDFs, I have found. Gin makes them go a little bit squiffy, but coffee helps you keep the straight lines. So there we go. <laughs> so I hope that's been useful today. Um, if you've got any questions, do stick them in the comments. 
and uh, I'm really sorry we had a bit of a technical issue earlier on but hopefully it looks like it's got it sorted now and what we'll do is try and blend the two videos together when we put them on YouTube later. Uh, we're going to do a proper version of this, <laughs> she says a proper version. We're going to do a little bit of uh, a proper video where we're doing screen shares so you can see exactly what I'm seeing on the computer and stuff like that. Um, and we're going to do a checklist for you as well. We're going to put that into the sewing studio. And that's going to be one of the tutorials that we're going to put in there. If you haven't joined already, why not? Actually, no, it's um, hop over and have a look. You can have a look through the website, see what it looks like. Um, and have a quick chat with anybody in the uh, in our Sewing Something friends um, because a lot of people who are in the sewing studio are in our general group as well. Um, and if you've got any questions about anything, just let me know. But otherwise, have a... Oh. We have also just edited some new videos. Oh yes, we have got new content going into the sewing studio. So that's gonna be going in the next day or so as well. And we're working on the next big thing that's going to be in there. Um, and hopefully that will be in there in June. So we've got another big course, big meaty course that we're working on as well. So um, that's going to be in there too. Uh, as I said, if you've got any questions, let us know. Don't forget to watch Sewing Bee, which is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've still got a bit of catching up to do with Grayson's Art Club. Art Club yeah. yeah, Grayson Perry, we've got two of those to watch now, haven't we? Yep, yep. Oh. Some other comments. Oh, lovely. Uh, the wine's good, but not with a craft knife. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You want to keep all your fingers because they kind of help with sewing, really, don't they? Uh, ask a question, what kind of glue to use? Um, I use Pritt Stick. There are other brands available, but I've found that they're not quite as good. Um, and it dries really nicely. It's nice and flat. You could tape it if you wanted to, um, but I... The reason I prefer glue is that you get that whole solid line stuck rather than taping just bits of it and it just makes the whole thing a bit more fragile really. Whereas glue, it is fairly robust if you give it time to stick properly. So I like Pritt stick, I have to admit. Some uh, other questions, uh, new to this, where do I buy patterns etc and do you have any clergy patterns? Ah, yes we do. Um, if you hop over into the uh, sewing studio, we do a clergy t-shirt as a standalone course on its own, or it comes as part of the subscription club. So you're getting a lot more in the subscription club, which is a really good one. Um, and if you want to buy the patterns, go over to our main website, which is sewmesomething.co.uk, and then click on the patterns and they're all in there. So we've got, I can't remember how many we've got now, quite a few. And we're adding to them all the time. In fact, I'm working on some new things at the moment, which hopefully will come out very soon. I'm not going to give you a deadline because you'll hold me to it. And I like them to be slightly flexible. So, <laughs> um, Yeah, definitely don't order or cut and stick while drinking wine. No. Or, yes, or gin. Do you need a special programme to merge the layers? Um, no, you have to do that by hand because uh, if you want to, so when we say merge, basically if you are, so on with all the lines on the pattern, because the patterns are all multi-size, you've got all of the different sizes included. So if you are, say, a 12 on the bust, but a 14 on the waist and a 16 on the hip, say, then you can draw in your own lines on the paper once you've printed it all off draw in your O-lines that bridge, that kind of cross over the tram lines. So you can take it from a 12 to a 14 on the waist and then out to a 16 on the hip. So it enables you to get a better fit before you've even made it. So you're making sure that you're cutting the pattern to the right size right from the word go. And are you going to be making any videos about that kind of thing in the oh, sewing studio? Oh, absolutely. Yes, we are. Sure. There are only so many hours in the day um, there are so many things we want to do. I'm so excited about it. There's loads of cool stuff that I want, really want to do, but it does take time to do. So do bear with us. We're adding in, we're going to be adding in new stuff all the time, but the really meaty things, I mean, the Cressida, how long did that take to edit, um, to film and edit? I mean, it was at um, least... Oh, um, for a week. Uh, yeah, that's continuous. I yeah. think it was probably closer to two weeks, actually, yeah. of filming and then editing. And then Charlie's got to chop it all up and put it all together and then we've got to go through it all and make sure that everything's how it should be and it takes a while so do bear with us but we're trying to give you content as we go so we hopefully you won't be bored 
Quality takes time. Exactly what that man said. Yes. <laughs> uh, spray mount. Spray mount is good for bigger areas because you can't be as directed with spray mount. I love spray mount. I had a very intimate relationship with spray mount when I was a fashion student and we used to spend all night preparing presentations and stuff like that in a very closed, shut-in bedroom. Yes, it wasn't good. I did have a bit of a headache in the morning after that one, I can say. <laughs> um, what did you make with Orla at the weekend? Ah, oh, Amy, yeah. She's feeling a bit sad at the moment because um, my daughter's really, really into horses. And uh, she had a horse called, well, she still has got, a, technically she's still got a horse called India, who's lovely, beautiful thing. Um, and uh, Orla was getting her back into fitness again after she'd been, um, not neglected, but hadn't been worked. And as soon as she got back into fitness and Orla was starting to jump her and stuff, bang, she got injured. So she had a suspensory ligament injury, which is basically this kind of ligament in what would be the equivalent of our arm. And um, sometimes they get over it, sometimes they don't. So unfortunately, India was one of the ones that didn't get over it. And um, she's kind of classed as unrideable now. She's not in pain and she's quite happy, but we can't use her for what Orla wanted to. So we have now found a retirement home for her, which is a lovely place. And she's really happy. She's got a little mate in the stable next door to her and she can just chill in the fields and just get groomed and stuff like that. So she's really happy. But all is really missing her at the moment. So she was feeling it a bit. And um, she actually asked me if she could come do some sewing. So we're making a little, um, little wrap dress for her at the moment and she's using some of the Mopsy Spearmint um, rayon which is going to look really cute so yeah we had quite a nice day and uh, yeah we didn't realise we were sewing there late weren't we all of a sudden we suddenly thought oh my god it's nearly half past five we need to get home and start making dinner so it was really nice actually thanks Amy I know a little bit of quality time with my girl because she's 18 on Thursday oh my god where did that go mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Frightening. frightening. Uh, Christine says the, su the subscription is well worth it. Um, I think it is, Christine, actually. We've tried to make it so that you're getting a lot of value and there is shed loads of stuff going in there um, because we can't physically help you do stuff at the moment with being... We can't do the workshops. And if I'm honest, I don't know quite when we're going to be able to get back to doing that. Um, I wouldn't feel happy quite yet being in a room full of eight people breathing in the same air and I'm sure you guys aren't either. So until we're feeling confident that it's safe for everybody to be together again, um, we're going to be here online instead. So hopefully there's plenty of content and loads of value that you're going to get from it and we want to try and make it as affordable as we can. I know people are struggling, some people are struggling at the moment and we totally get that which is why we're going to continue to do the Technique Tuesdays and we're going to be doing stuff on YouTube as well. Um, but we wanted to keep it really nice and easy so that's why we've only got one platform, one kind of payment level. Um, I know that sometimes you can get different levels and you've got access to different amounts of content and stuff like that. And we thought, you know what, actually, the best way to get the most out of this and the best way that we can help you guys is for you to have access to everything. So although you can still do the in-depth courses on their own, you could just buy one of those for a set price and it's yours forever. And that's it. You can keep that and do what you want with it. But the best way, I think, to really help you guys is to put new stuff in all the time. And so with the subscription club, it means you're paying 20 quid a month for however long you want to do that. That's absolutely fine. You can cancel it at any time. We haven't set a minimum thing for you because we think that you're going to get value from it straight away. And hopefully you will. So um, we've kind of kept it there because it's kind of affordable. Um, it's much less than you would be paying for a physical workshop. Um, and we are trying to keep it fresh and interesting and stuff going on there. We've got a Slack workspace. So rather than being on Facebook, and this is something that we're going to pop in the Facebook group. We have we did create a Facebook group initially, but I had so many people contacting me saying, we really want to be part of this, but we don't really want to do social media. So we thought, right, OK, how are we going to do this? And that's where we came up with Slack, which is another platform. It's a bit like instant messaging, emailing, but without the whole social media 
data harvesting, that kind of thing. So it's not going to infringe on your privacy in any way. Um, we've set it up so that you just have your username up there and you can join in with different chats and conversations. We've created different channels so that you can have conversations about particular things, which makes it much easier to kind of keep in touch with people um, rather than on Facebook where everything just goes into the timeline. So if you are if you kind of noticed a comment about a hero trousers a couple of weeks ago, you've got to scroll through the whole thing to find it. Whereas on Slack, there'll be a channel specifically about our patterns. So you'll be able to find the comments and queries and stuff like that really easily. So I'm hoping people are... Um, going to make the most of that that's really good uh amy yeah i know i will put some pictures up when she's when she's finished it so yeah she's quite proud actually zoe's horse riding her school has shut yeah the um the place that all works at um she works at a yard they're trying to think about different ways to open up and i really hope they do um because it's been very hard on them actually oh nicola you've got horses feel your pain i know you'd get so attached to them don't you I mean, yeah, they're so intelligent and wonderful animals. They really are. But for big, enormous things, they're actually surprisingly delicate, aren't they? And if their legs or feet go wrong, you've kind of had it, really, which is a real shame. Uh, oh, Christine, you answered your son on here. <laughs> are you getting confused? <laughs> oh, dear. I think that's really funny. Uh, have ah. you, are you doing a mask? A mask? Um, we haven't done. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm a bit conflicted about this, to be honest. This probably isn't the best place to share this kind of information. So I'm going to leave it there. We're looking at it. We are looking at it. Um, there are loads of patterns out there if you want to have a go at making a mask. Um, how effective they are, I don't know. But um, sometimes feel people feel a bit more comfortable wearing one. So, um, yeah, it's something we're looking into. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, the locker. Ah, it's yes. Things. Claire, watch this space. Actually, we're going to be doing the Love Your Rover locker is the next big thing that we're going to be putting in the sewing studio. Uh, and I'm really excited about that one because we're going to be doing extra stuff that we don't do in the physical Love Your Rover locker workshop that we do here. We're going to be having extra bits, but we're going to be able to because we can do it online. So I'm really looking forward to that one. In fact, we're planning it and we're going to film it next week. Well, I we? thought you were going to keep that one under wraps. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't keep secrets, I'm rubbish. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> Julia, you must be a horse, your legs are gone. <laughs> Do you know what? I sometimes feel that myself, actually. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, yeah, Claire, don't struggle with your overlocker. Stroke it and talk to it nicely. Um, and I would say, just sit down with a day and get to know your own machine. That's so important. Um, a lot of times, well, depending on where you get your, your sewing machines from, if you get them from a dealer, which unfortunately you probably won't be able to do now, but they often do um, like a free hour's worth of tuition that comes with your machine. But I would seriously sit down, cup of tea, something good on the radio, and just go through your instruction manual. That will really help you get to grips with your machine. I know the temptation is you just kind of want to get in there and use it, but actually if you learn where all the different bits and pieces are on it, it's really going to help you. Uh, do a basic one for thick people who just can't get it. You're, I'm sure you're not thick, Claire. I'm sure you're not. It's like another bit of kit, isn't it? It's a bit of tech. You just need to get used to it, that's all. So, yeah, just have a go. Have a play and you'll be fine. There we go. Oh, I'm just reading something else that's now that's popped up. Sorry, that's completely irrelevant. Three, two, one, back in the room. Right, I hope that PDF has, this kind of, what we've done this morning has helped you with your PDF patterns. Um, I think they are the way forward, to be honest. Uh, we were struggling recently to try and get hold of the card wallets that we keep our, that we package up our patterns in. And um, that was a real struggle. And we were thinking, oh my gosh, we're only gonna be, we, luckily we have managed to get hold of some now, which is really, really good. Um, but in terms of things like stuff like this, like paper, ink, stuff like that, all of those will have a contributing factor onto how we are able to produce what we do because it's a physical thing and transporting physical things at the moment is a bit tricky um, so actually I think PDFs and getting to grips with PDFs is a really sound move actually and it will help benefit everybody in the future as well so while we can do printed ones we will um, but we there may come a point where we can't in which case we are happy to do the uh, 
PDF service and I'm going to be doing more about that later. So have a lovely rest of the day. Don't think we've got any more questions. If there are any, stick them in. Uh, Linda, oh, oh, I see you like the best of both worlds. You want the printed one and the PDF. I don't blame you, actually. It's quite nice to have both then, isn't it? And you know if anything happens to your printed one, you've got a backup then too. Um, so have a lovely day, everybody. You are rubbish with I am rubbish with secrets, Sue. I really am. I just want to share everything. I want you to know what's going on because it's so exciting. Um, right, we're going to go and go for do some more now, haven't we? Because uh, we're on her chanda. Our patterns are on her chanda on Sunday. So I'm not going to be there, unfortunately. So we've got to do a bit of filming this afternoon for them so that they can have a bit of VT to put on their show on Sunday. I don't know what time it is on Sunday, actually. I can't remember. Don't Never mind. But don't forget, we are here to help you. Um, ask us questions if you need anything uh, if we're out of stock of anything that you need let us know and we'll see if we can get hold of it for you we're trying to get more fabric in on a regular basis but again it's tricky because their warehouses are running on a skeleton staff as well so it's everything's kind of like a little bit delayed so if we run out of something I know we've run out of quite a lot of the linens that we put on the Fabric Friday a couple of weeks ago um, we are getting more of those in and hopefully they'll be here by the end of the week so do bear with us we're doing our best at the moment and um, stay safe enjoy the weather and I'll see you on Friday so take care <laughs>